So we know that your cap table is gonna list every single person or entity that owns a piece of your company. Generally, that means founders, investors, employees, and maybe advisors or consultants. Now that you have the list, the single most important piece of info you'll need to put into your cap table is this. What type of ownership does each stakeholder have? There are a ton of different ownership types, and it can be a lot to wrap your head around. My name's Peter. I'm the head of Insights at Carta, and in this lesson, we're going to help you get a foundation for the types of equity you might give out and how to track them on your cap table. You ready? Let's get into it. Ownership can come in a few different forms. One basic way to break it down is like this. On the one hand, you have shares, meaning an actual ownership percentage in the company. On the other, you have various types of rights, like the right to buy or obtain shares at some to-be-decided date in the future. So let's go ahead and zero in on the first one, shares. There are two types of shares that a private company typically issues, common shares and preferred shares. We're gonna do an overview of both, so let's start with the first one, common shares. So right off the top, common shares are the most basic, fundamental type of ownership in a private company. They're typically given to two groups, founders and employees. On the founder side, you'll generally see founders grant common shares to themselves when they form the company, or in the case of multiple co-founders, like it might be you and someone else founding this company, the co-founders typically reach an agreement about what percentage of ownership each founder is going to receive. For example, let's say that you have two co-founders. They might decide to split the ownership of their company 50-50, or they may go with 70-30, 60-40, etc., in order to reflect their contributions. Here at Carta, our data shows that among teams with two co-founders, around 40% of them split equity evenly. For the founders that don't, 55-45 is the median common split. Either way, at this early stage, the cap table might have just a few names on it, just the co-founders. So when you create your first cap table, you'll probably be dealing with exclusively common shares. Founders can also reserve additional shares to give out to employees. These typically come in the form of stock options, which give employees the right to purchase shares of the company at a future date. Now, we'll talk a lot more about employee ownership plans and stock options in the next video. But for now, just file options away in your mind and let's move on to share type number two, preferred shares. Preferred shares usually go to investors in the company. The main advantage of preferred shares is that they get priority over common shares in a couple of key ways. So way number one, let's say your company eventually goes public or gets sold to another company. People holding preferred shares, which again is usually your investors, not your founders or employees, are typically first in line to be paid out. On the other hand, let's say your company goes bankrupt and has to liquidate its assets. Preferred shareholders typically go to the head amongst all other stakeholders. Meaning, if you go bankrupt, preferred shareholders are more likely to get their money back than common shareholders. When you raise money from investors, they'll normally work out a document with you called a term sheet which spells out the terms of their financial stake in your company. That term sheet is where the exact details of these share preferences are spelled out. So if you wanna know our typical advice, you gotta work with your legal team to make sure you understand the specifics of everyone's share type before you sign anything. Okay, we've laid a foundation. Now let's look at some of the typical scenarios you might see with preferred shares. In a normal early stage agreement, the investor might get what's called a 1x preferred share. This means that in an asset sale, the investor would fully recoup their investment by being paid out 1x. Or in other words, they'll get $1 back for every dollar they invested. In this scenario, the common stakeholders, including the founders, would then divide up whatever money remains after the preferred shareholders have been paid out. But sometimes, especially in later financing rounds, Investors might demand a 2x or even a 3x preference. This kind of thing makes it way less likely that any money would be left over for those common shareholders. Investors can also ask for and receive what's called a participating share. This means that in addition to their normal preferred status, they also get to participate in any distributions that the common shareholders get. I won't get into it here, but basically there are some situations where this would give investors a better return. So, okay, I know what you might be thinking. Why would a founder ever agree to terms like that? 
There are a couple reasons. One, founders have an incentive to meet investor demands because they may view investor financing as preferable to other sources of funding, like taking on debt or what have you. Debt has to be paid back, whether the company succeeds or has to wind down. And investor financing generally doesn't, as long as the company uses the cash in good faith. Two, there may be other advantages to having the backing of investors, especially notable venture capital firms that can give advice, they can help with networking, or they can put the word out to other investors that your company's worth getting behind. For those reasons, founders are generally willing to accept these fairly standard terms when it comes to these preferred shares. 